اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا ابي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وال ابراهيم وبارك على محمد وال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد respected viewers my dear brothers and sisters assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask him sincerely to accept your a'mal which you have done during the holy month of ramadan masha allah and tabarak allah and bless be upon you all the dear brothers and sisters for completing shahar ramadan shahar al-siyam shahar al-baraka shahar al-maghfira shahar at-tauba the holy month of ramadan was full of many blessings which i'm sure most of you my dear brothers and sisters you feel if allah would allow us to continue with the fasting because why there was peace during the holy month of ramadan there was tranquility and there was love mahabba wherever you go you could see muslims all over the places who are busy with ibada taking care of one another alhamdulillah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all now we have come to the end of the holy month of ramadan and tomorrow insha allah ta'ala is going to be the day of eid and from safir tv and from all the staff who are working here they all sent me to extend to you dear viewers brothers and sisters eid mubarak and eid saeed to you all insha allah ta'ala and may allah accept your eid insha allah may it may it be a moment of joy a moment of happiness a moment when we can celebrate and reflect so now tomorrow is eid <clears throat> what is the meaning of eid yes we know that eid according to many people is just celebration eid is a holiday 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 means what we are going to be free we are not going to work we are going to celebrate we are going to eat nice food we are going to wear nice clothing we are going to visit one another all those meanings are good but when we reflect the meaning of eid then we come to one meaning which most of the time we miss it it has been narrated that as proverb it could be a word from masum which says laysa al-eid liman labisa al-jadid wa innama al-eid liman khafa al-wa'id and in another saying it says laysa al-eid liman labisa al-jadid wa innama al-eid liman khafa yawm al-wa'id it is not an eid for a one who just wearing a nice clothing a new clothing wa innama al-eid it is eid for the one who fears the day of returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you look at this meaning it tells us that eid it's not only to be associated with happiness in this world and when we celebrate and unfortunately some of us when we celebrate then we forget to do a'mal saliha we forget to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is very wrong imagine dear brothers and sisters we have done all the a'mal during shah ramadan we have kept ourselves away from backbiting from lying from neglecting salah we were punctual on salah we were ready to look at our clo- cloth and and to look at our watches and to look at the time to say now it's the time for salah let's go for salah masha allah most of you you are praying jamaa but unfortunately on the day of eid some people will forget whatever they have built in terms of iman and they are going to crush that building of iman because of committing masiya so this proverb it says laysa al-eid liman labisa al-jadid wa innama al-eid liman khafa yawm al-wa'id 
It's not just an id for us to wear nice clothing, new clothing. The id is actually id for the one who fears the day when he or she will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on this basis, we understand that the word id comes from ada, ya'udu, awdan, aidan, id. Ada ya'udu. It means to return. What does it mean to return, Eid, to return where? According to some scholars, they say, during the holy month of Ramadan, we were observing fasting until time of Maghrib. We were eating and uh, our iftar at that time. And then just before Fajr, we stop eating until time of Maghrib again. So that system was new. That system, the regime, if we can call it, it was a new to our bodies and our system of life, our communities. On the day of Eid now, we are going back to the same system which we used to do it before the, the holy month of Ramadan. So we are going to return to our normal lives. That returning is Eid. We are going to return to what we used to do. So now, if you take that meaning, and compared to what it says that Eid is not just a celebration of wearing new clothing, but also you need to think about the day when we are going to be returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and meet with him. So that's number one. Also, a meaning of Eid is a celebration. For example, we remember Banu Israel, when they told Nabi Isa alayhi wa ala nabiyyina salam, they say that, O oh Isa, tell your Lord, to bring to us ma'idatan mina samai, a table full of food, li takuna lana idan, so that it could be an Eid for us and for those who are going to celebrate. So according to that meaning, in terms of Bani Israel, they wanted just to celebrate, and celebration is known as Eid. That meaning also we do have in Islamic understanding, and many people understand when we say Eid, it means just celebration where people will eat nicely, wear nicely, and so on and so forth. So Eid for us, we understand that this Eid, which we are celebrating it tomorrow, this is known as Eid al-Fitr. And for this reason, when we talk about Eid, we need to understand that there are few types of Eid. Tomorrow's one is known as Eid al-Fitr. Why is it known as Eid al-Fitr? Because tomorrow we are going to pay fitra to the poor people. Fitra to those who are in need. Fitra is known as zakatul fitra in, in full terminologies. Zakatul fitra is the zakah which we pay each and every one of us who observe fasting. And within our families, the head of the family is the one who has to pay zakatul fitra to those who are in need. And this fitra is paid for himself or for herself and for the children and anyone who is a dependent of this head of the family. So if a father has got a wife and children, he has to pay for himself, for the wife and for the whole children. And if, for example, within the family there is a grandmother, grandfather, and they depend on their son, he has to pay for them also. Also, if there is a guest who has come to stay with you, you have to pay also Eid al-Fitra on his or her behalf, or if there are many guests, you have to pay that. And this is to show that we care for those who are going to receive Zakat al-Fitra. And those who receive Zakat al-Fitra are fuqara and masakin, those who are poor and those who are destitute, those who are in need those people who cannot have their meal uh, easily, those people who cannot have their budget within an year easily, those who are in need, even if there are some people who are working but they cannot earn whatever they need easily, they need to be given zakatul fitra. So this Eid is, is known as Eidul Fitr because of the fitra which we are paying. And according to many ahadith from the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, from Ma'asumina alayhi wa sallam, they indicate that if we observe fasting and tomorrow is Eid and then we don't pay zakatul fitra, our fasting will be hanging 
between the heaven and this earth. It means that there is a danger for our fasting not to be accepted because we, had, we, have, we have not paid that due to those who are in need. We have not paid zakah to those who are in need. Question, when do we need to pay zakatul fitra? Zakatul fitra is paid like now. We are in the Maghrib, after Maghrib, alhamdulillah, we have uh, prayed. We are going to pay zakatul fitra once the moon has been declared that tomorrow is Eid. So for us, tomorrow we know that it is Eid. From now, we can pay zakatul fitra to those who are in need. Until tomorrow, when we go for salatul Eid, also we can pay salat, zakatul fitra just before we start salatul Eid. And if it happens, maybe because you are busy and you forgot to pay zakatul fitra, you can pay zakatul fitra after coming from salatul Eid. And if someone has forgotten, let's say completely, he didn't manage to pay zakatul fitra until after salatul Eid, and then he remembers when it is duhur time, he can pay it up to that time. If he delays after that time, let's say now it's Salatul Dhuhr and he has not paid the Zakatul Fitra, that will be counted as just Hadiyah or Sadaqah or something else. It will not be counted as Zakatul Fitra. And we should remember that when we give Zakatul Fitra as soon as possible, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us for that. And another point which is very important to connect with Eidul Fitr and Zakatul Fitra we need to give zakatul fitra, number one, within our family members. If there are people who are in need, fuqara and masakin, we need to give them that zakatul fitra. So I can take my zakatul fitra and my wife's zakatul fitra and for my children, and I can give it to one person, or I can give it to one family, or I can divide it, divide it into many groups and give it to different people. Why do we need to give zakatul fitra? It is because number one, it is a command from the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam who said, "Give your zakatul fitra," and it is the sunnah of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam who used to give fitra. And number three, zakatul fitra will bring happiness and will make those people who do not have enough in order for them to celebrate Eid also. That joy shouldn't be only for us who have, but the joy of Eid need to be shared with those people who do not have, and we need to include them in our activities of celebration by giving them zakatul fitra. What can we give? We can give either food, which is the staple food of wherever we are, or we can give equivalent in terms of money. If this food, for example, we want to buy, if it happens, for example, it is five pounds, for example, we can give five pounds for myself, for my wife, another five pounds for our children. So five pounds on each person according to the number of the family we have, and then we give it to those who are in need. Now, when we give zakatul fitra, as we have mentioned, those who receive also, they will pray for you. They say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Now imagine you have made a mu'min to be happy. And the hadith is very clear. Idkhalu sururi ala al-mu'mini sadaqa. When you make a mu'min happy, you will be as if you have given sadaqa. So now you have given zakatul fitra and also you have made another believing brother or sister to be happy. So it is nur ala nur. This is light upon light. Mubarak to you all dear brothers and sisters. Now, Another mas'ala which is very important concerning zakatul fitra is do we need to give where we came from, from our so-called native countries, or do we need to give zakatul fitra where we are? Here, some people have the idea that if we live, for example, in Europe, Europe, there are no masakin, there are no fukara, they think. So because of this, they decide, let's take our fitra, send it back home, wherever that home is. And they tend not to give to the people who live locally. That is wrong. 
we need to give to the people who are local, those who are in need. Number one, whether the locals are our family members, our relatives, extended families, our neighbors, our local area where we are, and then we can extend to the towns and cities which are near. So, for example, someone who lives in London, he can give his, his zakat ul fitra to the area where he is, whether it is East London, West London, North, Lo North London, or South London, he can give to those. In his area, if there are no people who are in need, he can expand it to other areas. And then you go outside London, for example. And if there are no one who needs to be given in those areas, then we can send the money wherever is required according to the proper channels which needed to be followed here. Now, according to Zakatul Fitra, is given to those people, as we have said, they are fuqara and masakin on the day of Eid. What if you gave your Zakatul Fitra before Eid and you gave it to someone and you said, this is Zakatul Fitra, that is not accepted because Zakatul Fitra is a timely Zakat. It has to be given on the Maghrib, from the Maghrib Eve, if tomorrow is Eid, and in the morning of Eid. However, you can give your Zakatul Fitra as a mana to someone. You can tell him or her, can you keep this money for me? When the Eid day comes, that will be your Zakatul Fitra. That is accepted because Zakatul Fitra has to be spent on the day of Eid for Masail of Zakatul Al Fitra. Now, when we talk about types of Eid, so tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, is Eid al Fitr, and Eid al Fitr is a holy day. It is a day of joy, happiness, and it is a moment where people will come together as we are going to discuss in details, inshallah ta'ala. However, other types of Eid we have Eid al Adha. Eid al Adha is the Eid which comes in the month of Dhul Hajj. Eid al Adha. It is connected with the people who go for Hajj. Those who go for Hajj, normally they don't celebrate Eid the way those who are not in Hajj celebrate. Because why? The people who go for Hajj, they are busy with the activities of Ibadah. And when they are in the area of Mina, normally they don't get enough time to celebrate because they have a lot of programs to do on that particular day of Eid al-Adha. However, for the people who are not in Hajj, then they get opportunity to celebrate Eid al-Adha, that is another Eid. And of course, we remember for the followers of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, we have Eid al-Mubahala, we have Eid al-Ghadir, and we have many other types of Eid. And according to one narration, it says that Kullu yawmin La yu'uswa fihi lahu fahuwa Eid. Any day when people do not commit mistake, they do not commit sins against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no any sin which has been committed on that day, that day will be counted as Eid. So for this, we understand that there are many types of Eid, but when we talk about the Eid, the two Eid, these are Eid al-Fitr, Tomorrow, insha'Allah ta'ala, and Eidu al-Adha. Now, when we look at uh, the a'mal which are needed to be done, especially on this night, the eve of Eid, unfortunately, many people think that this is the day when we need to relax. Why? Because we have done a lot of a'mal during the holy month of Ramadan. Every night, a'mal. Then the a'mal of Laylatul Qadr. And then the A'mal of recitation, the Holy Quran, and so on and so forth. So they think that when it comes to the eve of Eid, like tonight, we need to relax. My dear brothers and sisters, that is not the case. The eve of Eid is the night of A'mal. According to the narrations from Ahlul Bayt, salam, this night is counted as Laylatul Qadr in terms of merits. Can you imagine? Eve of Eid is counted as Laylatul Qadr. Why? Because of the A'mal, because of the acts of worship which are needed to be done on this particular night. 
And according to the narrations, it, say, it says that the blessings will be upon those people who will stay awake on the eve of the Eid for them to do ibadah until Fajr. Allahu Akbar. So do not relax. You get the opportunity of ibadah, do the ibadah. Amongst the ibadah, number one is to take shower, ghusl. The way when we were going for a'mal of Laylatul Qadr, we used to take shower. Now here also, you take shower. You sit down and you do a lot of dua. This dua can be found in either duas.org or in Mafatihul Jinan or other books of Ad'iyah. You can see that there are plenty of dua which need to be done in order for us to celebrate the Eid by remembering Allah Azza wa Jalla, by remembering Him and being closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the a'mal which we need to do is takbir by saying Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. That God is greater than any description. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than any description which can describe Him. When you just say Allahu Akbar and this stays in your mind, you say it by your tongue and your mind knows that Allah is Akbar and you Acknowledge that, that will have a lot of benefit not only to you, but to those who are near you. And remember, tomorrow when people are going to pray Salatul Eid, one of the a'mal also is to recite takbira of Eid. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd until the end of takbira. Imagine within our families if we are together and we are saying takbira and another family they say takbira until tomorrow when we go we say takbira this takbira will make us really to recognize the magnificence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we say this while we know that truly speaking it is only allah who is akbar so this is one of the a'mal which need to, needs to be done on the eve of Eid. And then there are many types of dua which can be recited. And at least if we can forget any a'mal, we cannot perform any a'mal tonight, any acts of worship, at least we need to send salawat to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam by saying Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. We send salam and salutations to the Prophet and to his family to honor him and to remember that Eid, when it was established, it was Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam who taught the Ummah and who took for himself the burden of making sure that people will celebrate it properly. It is this A'mal which we need to remember and we continue with Ibadah until the Fajr, when Fajr of the day of Eid comes, we have to continue with Ibadah. So if you have time to pray Salatul Layl before Fajr, on the eve of Eid, pray Salatul Layl. Once you finish Salatul Layl, Salatul, or we call it namaz Shab, this Salatul Layl Tahajjud will elevate our status and positions. And then of course, in the Fajr of the day of Eid, pray Salatul Fajr, pray Mustahab first and then pray Salatul Fajr and then we wait to go for Salatul Eid which is very important and insha'Allah ta'ala when we get another opportunity we will explain about the A'mal which need, needs to be done on the day of Eid insha'Allah ta'ala. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all the ibadah which you have done, all the acts of worship which you have done during the holy month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your fasting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept whatever charity you have given for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah accept your iftar which you have given to the people who are poor, they didn't have anything to break the iftar. May Allah reward you and increase your barakah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all the a'mal which you have done during the holy month of Ramadan to benefit you in this world as well as in the hereafter, insha'Allah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on all our marhumin, 
mu'minina and mu'minat, muslimina and muslimat, when you celebrate Eid, remember those who are in need, don't hesitate to share the happiness with them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all once again. Eid Mubarak to you all dear brothers and sisters. Eid Sa'id wa as'ad Allahu ayyamakum wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sa'id, 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 Sa'